guys, as you know, earlier today I did a video on uh, Arlington, Texas doing a startup. So this is the living room and me showing you exactly what the living room looks like. And then this is the upstairs room where her daughter's room was. And this is me starting the whole process of moving the living room, living room upstairs. Now, a lot of people, they say, oh, well, it doesn't have to take up the whole living room. If you have a two story and you have a place to put your living room, then go for it. I mean, she has the support of her spouse and he was okay with it. And this is what she wants for her vision. Some of you are okay with being in a corner. Some of you are okay with being in a little room. Just know that every family child care, no two family child care or home child care are going to be the same. So you have to do what fits for you. I've had clients call me and say, oh my gosh, I want a big daycare like all the daycare homes that you've done but I don't have the space or my husband doesn't want to give up the living room. First and foremost, your marriage is more important than opening your home daycare. So you want to make sure you're good in that area first. And then remember, you don't have to do everything that you see on this channel. And that's why I'm going to be showing you, you all some of the smaller home child care setups so that you won't get be discouraged and think that you have to have like this mega living room, small child care center in your home. No, you can do what works for you. And then if it's something where, where maybe financially you have to start off small, then start off small that way. Don't try to throw so much into your home child care space. I always tell people, I rather you start something small with a little bit of things than having so much stuff and you're not using it. But right now you see me taking apart her couch. If you want to know where she got that furniture, let me know and I will give you the link. It was so amazing. A sectional that comes apart and you put it back together. I thought it was so cool. Number one, I was like, thank you, Jesus, because I didn't have to take the whole sectional upstairs. Although I was up for the challenge, but it was actually better this way for my body, my back and everything, especially having to go up and down the stairs. But um, so, yeah, look at your space that you have. Talk with your spouse. Remember, that's going to be the first thing. I always tell people to start there. There's no point of contacting me if you haven't talked to your spouse because the last thing I need is for your spouse to walk in the door and be like, who are you? Why are you here? Why are you putting, throwing, where's my couch? Where's my TV? Um, because that would be awkward for all of us and I'm going to leave <laughs> because your marriage is more important than me being there and setting up your daycare. But anyway, so you want to make sure that you have a space that's going to fit for your area. As you see here, I went ahead and moved all the daycare stuff to the side, stuff that she had purchased. Again, she didn't break her bank. She was going to garage sales. She was going to um, Goodwill and all these other places, places that were having sale to get her furniture for her daycare. The next thing that you're seeing me move upstairs is the entertainment system, the Xbox gaming system, and the television. Now, the cool thing about this is she has the full support of her husband. And so I want to make sure while he's gone and at work that I, number one, take good care of his items. You know, I have two sons and I know how important the gaming system is. But most importantly, when I set up stairs, vacuum, like sweep up the area, make it look real nice. And so when the husband comes home, the spouse, you want to make sure that it's not like, oh, this woman just came in, just threw everything everywhere and she didn't care about our property. And then it just starts off the whole business on the wrong foot. So I wanted to make sure that I took special care of everything that her husband um, had all of his items, basically, especially since he wasn't there to dictate or to tell me where he wanted all the items to be. Now, while you're thinking about what you're going to be moving, if it's a living room or a small room, it really just depends on what you're doing with that room. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to show you a couple of more small home child care setups. I just haven't put them together yet. But small child care setups are just as effective as big child care setups for numerous reasons. One of the reasons is you're not worried about toys being everywhere. You're not worried about children being everywhere. A lot of the small setups are people who are caring for more infants. Um, the client here, she, the provider here, she has an infant of her own and she's going to be caring for another infant that is her family and that's it. And so she'll be able to have her max capacity not be 12, but she'll be able to still get a good amount of children in considering the fact that she will have two infants. So remember in the state of Texas, the more infants that you care for, the lower your max capacity will be. 
Infants are considered 17 months or and younger in the state of Texas, so always keep that in mind. If you're not taking care of infants, I highly recommend that you put on your policies that you're taking ages 18 months walking and above. I always say two if you can, but again, if you have to take 18 months, why walking? Um, you want to be able to, if it's your calling, because some people's calling is to do just infants. However, if you've never done child care or you've never done child care business, please don't jump in trying to care for infants. Um, the reason why I say like to make sure they're walking is because if you have some infants that are some children that are crawling, some infants, children who are, who are walking, then you're like, man. If I have a fire drill in front of my inspector, I have to be able to get all these children out. And for infants that are crawling, you'll have to hold them. Or if you're smart, you're going to put them in the pack and play and roll them out the door while holding on to the other children. So you have to think of things like that. What would you do in an emergency situation when it comes to trying to get all of the infants and the children out of your home? And again, you don't want to be that provider or that child care that has a bad reputation in your community. So make sure you think about all of those things and be mindful of those things. Now I'm putting together the couch again. One of the things I forgot to mention, um, I'm not good at puzzles. So even though this is speedy I kind of was like uh I should have took a picture of how this was prior to because I didn't remember how it was supposed to go so this looks like I'm a pro but actually it took me longer than that (laughs) I was sweating like I had sweat dripping from my face and everything but nonetheless it got done so again if you do any of your projects in your home and you take apart furniture make sure you uh take a picture Or at least remember how it's supposed to go. So when you have to put the furniture back together, you're good to go. Um, She's in the application process. So we haven't submitted her application yet. She was getting her home set up. If you're in the state of Texas, before you submit an application, they're going to want to make sure that you have your home set up. Because they may accept your application the day after you submit it. Now, the rule of thumb is they have 21 days to accept it, assign it to an inspector and get your inspector scheduled for your first um, announced visit. But again, that's just for the state of Texas. For your state, make sure that you know what you need. And here's one thing that you can do for me as we continue to grow our community community would be to send me a link and let me know for your state or your area what your requirements are. Um, I like to learn what the requirements are in other areas so that when those providers ask me questions, I'll know how to answer them or I can refer them to you. So you can either send me the link or you can actually send me your contact information if you are somebody that's credible and you know what you're doing. Other than that, this is me now putting together the TV. Again, like I said, making sure everything looks nice. See how I'm carefully putting the Xbox back together and making sure it's nice. And then making sure that all the electronics still work after you're done with everything. Now, keep in mind, this used to be the little their daughter's room. And now it's their upstairs living room. And when her husband came home, he was happy to just relax. And he may actually like it better to be away from all the sounds of the childcare. And then I found some more toys to take downstairs. Now that I'm downstairs, I'm kind of looking at the area, trying to get a feel of what's going to fit best for her. Now she can obviously change things around if she doesn't like it this way. But my key thing is just to go off of my experience where the bathroom is located, where the diaper diaper change is going to need to be taking place, where the parents are going to come in. Just those all those things that you need to consider when you're setting up your home child care and the function of what you're going to be doing with the children. Where will circle time be? How close is the table to the kitchen? Is the kitchen going to have its own table for the children to eat or are they going to eat in the child care area? So these are all the things that you have to consider. One of the things I spoke to my client about last night was pre-prepping food. I always used to pre-prep food on Sundays. Sundays, I would pre-prep all the food for the whole week, the grains, the meat, the vegetables, the fruit, and I would get 10 containers, not 10 T-E-N, 10 T-I-N foil containers. And then I would use Ziploc bags, huge Ziploc bags. So if they had sandwich um, sandwiches on Monday, I'll make the sandwiches, cut them up, put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the Monday tin, cut up the carrots, 
Add a little ranch in it, put it in the bag, boom, cut up uh, some watermelon, put it in the bag, and then move on to the next day. Hot dogs. Cut up hot dogs, put it in a Ziploc bag, boom, open a can of corn, drain it, put it in a big Ziploc bag, and then cut up grapes. And so all Sunday, I made sure to prep, and I actually changed it to be Friday. So I, when I would close on Friday, I would go at Fridays, I would go ahead and prep the rest of the week for the upcoming week because... That's when the food would be delivered from H-E-B for the children. And then I would just consider that a work day so that I would be able to enjoy my Saturdays and my Sundays. But anyway, this is me putting together furniture. That is not the thing I like to do the most, but hey, it gets done. Now we're putting up posters. Now, before you say her posters are too high. Yes, her posters are high because she has one set of posters that are going to be high. That's just there for decoration. And then she'll have another set of posters that she's going to put hole punch, um, two hole punches at the top and use rings. So then they'll become flip charts. So she'll be, so she'll be able to do circle time, days of the weeks, months of the year, the alphabets, counting to 10 or counting to 20 colors and shapes now remember one of the things you have to remember is the things like your age group if you have a younger age group don't overwhelm them with all this curriculum i see so many providers they have like 50 million different cur curriculum ideas but then they have to remember i'm like oh well, what age group you are you caring for you have the solar systems you have um all the states, puzzles. That's so cool. What's your age group? And then they tell me, oh, I'm taking care of infants up to three-year-olds. Oh, so do you have any alphabet stuff? Oh, no, but look what I got done. <laughs> so it just cracks me up. So make sure you stay with your age group. But anyway, you got to see the before and after of the little girl's room, their daughter, and now it's the couch this upstairs. And then this is the before like. of the downstairs living room. And this is the after. Look at all that space and the color. And again, you don't need a whole lot of stuff. And she still has to get a table. So those are the things that she's going to go get. But again, it's not a cluttered home. She's able to follow the COVID-19 procedures that we have here in place for Texas. And she's going to have her TV mounted. And now here's a quick overview video. Hi.